Kevin Harvick slams NASCAR's Iowa Speedway revamp, calling it one of the biggest F-ups in the whole year. As the NASCAR Cup Series prepares for its first ever race at the partially repaved track, drivers are divided. Will the controversial changes lead to a thrilling race or a one-groove disappointment? Let's find out. On his Harvick Happy Hour podcast, Harvick threw a severe critique of the decision, pulling no punches. Harvick said, this might be one of the biggest F-ups in the whole year, he declared. This might be one of the one of the biggest F-ups in the in the whole year. <laughs> he firmly believes that running at least one race on the old asphalt was absolutely necessary before making any changes. Furthermore, he questioned the logic behind repaving only a portion of the track. Harvick argued, if you're going to repave it, repave the whole corner because now you've got half a racetrack. I'm not sure. I, I think it's just the asphalt is so weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the whole corner is, is new asphalt. Okay. So. But NASCAR isn't backing down. They're standing firmly behind their decision. And Elton Sawyer, the senior vice president of competition, is leading the defense. Sawyer explained that the decision to repave was not made lightly. In fact, it was only after a thorough tire test and analysis that the need for repairs became apparent. Despite the criticism, Sawyer remains confident in the quality of the work done and believes it won't hinder the potential for multi-groove racing. In an interview with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Sawyer stated, Now, aesthetically, it looks a little different than what we would normally go into a facility and see, but we're confident the repairs are to a high level, and it's not going to be an issue, and we're still going to have some multi-groove racing around the racetrack. However, not all drivers are buying what NASCAR is selling. Christopher Bell and Ryan Blaney, two of the sport's rising stars, have expressed serious concerns about the impact of the partial repave. Bell, who has two Xfinity wins at the old Iowa track, stated while predicting the outcome. I mean, it completely ruined the corners and it's going to make it a one-groove racetrack. The top half is completely unusable. Even in the second groove, you move to try to get grip. And with new asphalt, there's no need to move up, so it's definitely going to be a different race. Blaney echoed Bell's sentiments, taking aim at the decision to repave only the bottom lanes. Uh, you know, a newly repaved racetrack. I think the first thing that we learned was A, the track had speed and B, the old track didn't matter. Blaney remarked, clearly frustrated with the situation, I don't know why you do that. In my mind, you either leave it or pave the whole thing. You can't pave two lanes on the bottom because now it's a two-lane racetrack. If you're lucky, it might get to that second lane. Forget about the third and fourth lane, it's never going to get there. But not everyone is ready to write off the revamp just yet. Denny Hamlin, a veteran driver known for his calculated approach, offered a more subtle perspective. While acknowledging the potential strategic complexities, Hamlin emphasized the importance of adaptability. He observed, Looks like you'll be able to force others on top of you up into the not so good grip. So it's interesting that they paved so much of it, but they didn't pave all of it. Still haven't seen exactly where the stops of grip are, but yeah, we're all going to be fighting for that blackest pavement. And then there are the optimists, Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski, both of whom participated in the Goodyear tire test at the end of May, have provided some much needed positive feedback. Keselowski in particular, was pleased with the elimination of rough patches that previously posed safety risks to the next-gen cars. Keselowski noted, A lot changed with the track surface. It used to have this really wicked tunnel bump down in the turns, and now that's kind of taken care of, which is nice, because the next-gen car doesn't really play well with bumps, kind of like an Indy car, but I think it'll make the car more raceable. Larson, too, highlighted the potential for improved racing dynamics due to the new surface, Larson commented, offering a glimmer of hope in the middle of controversy. The test was difficult with just three cars. Really a brand new surface, so gosh, it took probably four hours or so until we could actually get some grip and make some decent laps. But yeah, I think with 30 or whatever cars, the groove should widen out from what it was. It does have some progressive banking, so it should hopefully be a little bit better. But perhaps the most harsh critique came from none other than Dale Earnhardt Jr a man whose opinion carries a lot of weight in the NASCAR community. Junior didn't hold back, emphasizing the substantial impact the revamp will have on racing dynamics. He predicts the inevitable emergence of a single preferred groove that could overshadow the competitive spirit of the event. Dale Jr. warned, 
let's just assume that that's what you're going to get. You're going to have a racetrack where there'll be one lane that you have to be in, and if you're not in that one lane, you're going to be at least two to five tenths slower, so restart happens, you're side by side, and then somebody goes three wide, and you're headed down the corner, and you're all going, I want that grove. Let's just assume that that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna have a racetrack where there'll be one lane that you have to be in, and if you're not in that one lane, you're gonna be at least two to five tenths slower. All right, so restart happens, you're side by side, and then somebody goes three wide or jumps on your out, you know, you're at least two wide, maybe three wide, and you're all headed down to the corner, and you're all going, I, I want that groove. But Junior's criticism didn't stop there. He also highlighted the fact that despite the repave, persistent issues such as the severe bumps in turns one and two remain unaddressed. This is particularly concerning given the physical demands of the next gen car on drivers, Dale Jr. added, painting a grim picture of what drivers can expect. I thought that they repaved this track because of the bumps. Because all my Xfinity guys say the bumps, there are nasty, especially down in 1 and 2. The drivers talk about it being rough on them physically when this car goes over curbs or whatever. Larson says that a lot of bumps in the braking zone to turn 1 are still there, and still pretty severe. That's another thing that I don't envy. As the NASCAR Cup Series prepares for its inaugural race at Iowa Speedway, the debate surrounding the track's revamp continues. With opinions divided among drivers and officials, it's anyone's guess how the changes will impact the upcoming race. Will the partial repave lead to the thrilling multi-groove racing that fans crave, or will it result in a disappointing single-lane procession? The answer lies in the hands of the drivers and the unforgiving asphalt of Iowa Speedway. All eyes will be on Iowa this weekend. As drivers navigate the unfamiliar ground and adapt to the new surface, fans will be excited, eagerly watching to see how the situation evolves. Will the critics be proven right, or will NASCAR's gamble pay off in the end? The stakes couldn't be higher, and the tension is visible. But amidst all the controversy and uncertainty, there's a sense of excitement in the air. The NASCAR Cup Series' first visit to Iowa Speedway promises to be a race unlike any other in the track's history. With so much on the line and so many questions left unanswered, fans are in for a treat. Whether you're a diehard NASCAR fan or a casual observer, this is a race you would like to see. Will the revamp be a triumph or a tragedy? Will the drivers rise to the occasion or crack under the pressure? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to NASCAR Insider and press the bell icon for more NASCAR news and analysis.